<clears throat> Welcome, everyone. It is wonderful to see you. I think I, I think I remember most of you. Uh, no, uh, what a, it's a, a great gift to see your faces and to be together again, even if we're kind of far, even if we have to be kind of far apart and wearing disguises. Uh, it is good to be together as the people of God and to worship our God together. Um, it's uh, Psalm 118, verse 24, that says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So I'm going to say this is the day that the Lord has made, and you're going to say, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Uh, we're going to worship God uh, together now. You have a, a song sheet, and uh, so they're, they're, it's just going to go in order, um, and uh, Jeff is going to lead us uh, now in singing the praise of God. A little bit of instruction on singing with masks. I'm not because you wouldn't understand a word I say if I tried. If you are used to singing out and now you have a mask on your face, you may find that things are a little bit different than usual. You probably will hear yourself. Don't let that intimidate you. You've always sounded like that. You just didn't know it. And if you've always been afraid to sing because you're afraid people would hear you, you don't have to worry about that now. So let her rip. Uh, let's do our best to... Uh, Praise God. The first song we're going to sing is actually uh, one that is just appropriate for the fact that we're all here together after so many uh, weeks away from each other. It's how good it is when the family of God dwells together in spirit and faith and unity. Let's stand and sing. Oh, how good. acceptance and love are the fruit of his presence here among us. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord, and with one heart we'll live out his word till the whole earth sees. The Redeemer has come, for he dwells in the presence of his people. Oh, how good it is on this journey we share to rejoice with the happy and weep with those who mourn where the weak find strength, the afflicted find grace when we offer the blessing of belonging. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord and with one heart we'll live out his word till the whole earth sees the Redeemer has come, for he dwells in the presence of his people. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord, and with one heart we'll live out his word till the whole earth sees. He dwells in the presence of his people. Oh, how good it is to embrace his command, to prefer one another, forgive as he forgives. When we live as one, we all share in the love of the Son with the Father and the Spirit. So with one voice we'll sing to the Lord, and with one heart we'll live out his word 
till the whole earth sees the Redeemer has come, for He dwells in the presence of His people. I want you to remain standing now, if you would, as we pray together the prayer of confession that's printed uh, there on your sheet. And we're going to join together in prayer and uh, then a few moments for your own personal silent confession. Would you join me in prayer? God, our maker, have mercy on us. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. And behold, the old has gone and the new has come. Uh, dear friends, uh, by faith in Jesus, you're a new creation today. And you are forgiven. Amen. So, um, please be seated. Most of you uh, already know Abby and Preston Conger. Uh, if you don't, you've got the, the treat of meeting them right now. Abby and Preston, why don't you come on up and uh, we'll get you set up right here. Abby and Preston uh, are preparing and have been preparing for many months now uh, to answer God's call in cross-cultural mission uh, to go to Guatemala and uh, to serve Jesus Christ, uh, to serve the church there in, in Guatemala. I'm going to let them give you the details uh, about it, um, but uh, please listen carefully. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Bill, for inviting us up here, and uh, thank you all for um, um, inviting us here, and or, or we want to say we're glad to be with you this morning. It, it's been a long time since we've gotten together. And it's good to actually be able to gather with a group of believers at Christ Press. And like Pastor Phil said, we're the Congers. I'm Preston, and this is this is Abby, and we have little Clara over there with her with her Grammy, um, in the in the yellow sweater. And yes, we're going to Guatemala uh, as a family. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention we have a little one on the way <laughs> next month. Um, and so I just want to say we're glad to be members of a mission-minded church like Christ Press. It is really good to be a part of a church who's committed to a commitment and a tradition that has actually been around since the first century when Paul planted churches and strengthened the worldwide church in the Mediterranean world. So I know we've done a couple of videos before, so we wanted to just kind of give a quick update as to what um, is happening in Guatemala right now. So... Um, if you, as you've probably seen in the news, Latin America is kind of the next hot spot for coronavirus, and Guatemala is no exception. Um, on Friday, they had almost 650 cases, um, which is up from uh, about 400 a week ago, and then, you know, 50 a couple weeks before that. So uh, it's really been spiking and uh, rising exponentially. Um, there's been some government-enforced lockdowns, uh, but nothing... Um, holistic like we've seen here so mostly just a nightly curfew and a few weekends where they um, had to be quarantined for the whole Friday through Sunday um, and in Guatemala the real problem is is hunger is um, access to food 
um, and some basic necessities. So um, we've just been praying for that, and we just pray that we ask that you guys be praying along with us. Um, and, and really, it's the long-term effects of this are going to be uh, worse in Guatemala than they will be here, just because they rely on uh, uh, exterior countries for stability. So they, they rely a lot of, on international cooperation, um, and they just don't have reserves like we do here. So just, we just ask that you be praying with us for Guatemala and the people there. This crisis that we've faced ourselves and the whole world has been facing threatens the vitality of Seteca's mission to train future ministry leaders. Um, Seteca is a seminary in Guatemala City where Abby and I will be teaching. We'll be teaching Bible and theology and helping the seminary raise the next generation of ministry leaders in Guatemala City and all over the country and actually in countries all over Latin America. Seteca in this time has had to cut nearly half of their staff with an unclear future. And they have virtually no adjunct faculty. The ones that are still on are teaching ad honorum or without pay. And the se seminary is very much relying on teachers who are able to pay without an income from the seminary. Limited technology limits the availability of digital education. We've been able to respond to the crisis in part in education because of the digital, the technology that we have available in our homes and virtually everywhere. It is not so pervasive in Guatemala. SATEC has been able to provide some classes online, but as they're limited in their capabilities and as the students have been a part of their programs, have, have availability in their homes. SATEC has been training uh, ministry leaders for a long time. They began in 1929. And they have grown since then to have students in all the various programs, about 1,300 students. And this has been a big hit for them. Um, we're personally excited. We had no, no idea, no, none of us knew this crisis was going to hit, this pandemic. And we, were, we had a lot to look forward to in going to SATEC, and we still do. And we're, we believe that we can be a part of the future of the global church with Guatemala. We all do. We believe that um, the vitality of the church in one place affects the vitality of the church in another. All the churches around the world, our livelihood together as brothers and sisters, um, interact with each other. We, we all build each other up, whether we can see our brothers face to face or not. Um, we are affirming the work that Seteca has done for the church for decades, almost a century, by supporting their ministry and being with them in a hard time. And we can, we're at a crossroads of, for the church worldwide. Um, this is a hard time, and we have a lot of issues of our own. And we want to take this opportunity to stand with our brothers and sisters across the world who are also facing issues in this, in this hard time. So as uh, we've said, God has called us to be part of this uh, future church in Guatemala. Um, and Christ Prez as a church body has affirmed that call um, and chosen to stand behind us in this ministry. Um, that means that God has placed a unique call on each of you individually as members of the church uh, to consider how you can partner with us. Um, it's, part of that is a call to encourage us um, and the brothers and sisters in Guatemala um, as we raise support and get ready to head down there, especially in this age of increased isolation. Um, so even if you feel like you don't have a lot to give, really anything helps. Anything is encouraging, um, and anything um, <coughs> is going to help on the path uh, to get down there. We can't leave until we have full financial support. Um, this is usually regular monthly giving, um, but one-time gifts also are helpful. Um, after the service, we're going to set up like a little table area where we can answer questions. Um, a lot of you received pledge cards in the mail, so if you have those, we can take those today. Um, we can get you more information, get you added to our newsletter if you're not already getting that. Um, you can pick up a prayer card to put on your refrigerator uh, or your desk at home. Um, so you can remember to be praying for us and for Guatemala. Just a quick timeline update about what's next for us. So right now, partnership development is our main priority. We're at about 30% right now. Um, we want to be at 50% by the time our second little girl comes along. And that's in about a month. So um, we're hoping that you guys can help us with that, get that next 20%. Um, in September, we have the second half of our 
team orientation team is the Evangelical Alliance mission. That's the uh, agency that is kind of supporting us as we get ready to go. Um, and we need to be at 60% of our goal to attend. Um, after that, we're um, still hoping to take an extended trip to visit Preston's family and home church in Aiken, South Carolina. Um, and then the next kind of goal would be to be at 100% by the beginning of December. So that allows us to attend one final month-long training in Colorado in January. Um, and then our goal is to leave at the beginning of February if everything's open. So, so please be praying for us. And we do ask, seriously consider financially partnering with us. Uh, we both believe this is a real opportunity that God has given us as Christ Prez to participate in what God's doing around the world, specifically with Guatemala and the strengthening of the church worldwide. And we'll, uh, it, we'll, like Abby said, we'll be, have a table. We'll set it up after the service where you can drop off your pledge card or pick another one up. And it, it's our dream, really, for every single member at Christ Pres to partner with us in some way, whether financially or in, with, in your prayers. And we, we consider it a real honor and an opportunity for all of us to partner together. So thank you again for your time today and for your prayers for Guatemala. Abby and Preston, please, <clears throat> please just stay right there. Um, I'm going to do, <clears throat> we cannot do prayer with laying on of hands, but we can do high-tech Bluetooth <laughs> laying on of hands. Just, just raise, up, raise up your hand right now. Ser seriously do it as a, as a symbolic gesture of, of connection. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to pray for Abby and Preston. Uh, let's bow together. Heavenly Father, uh, we just uh, give you thanks for your call on all of our lives. You've called us to take up the cross and follow you in. Uh, we thank you for Abby and Preston and that they've answered your call to take up that cross and, and go to Guatemala. And uh, Father, uh, this is a, a really joyful gift for our church and we thank you for it and thank you for your leading in Abby and Preston's lives. and. Uh, Father, we pray you'll just continue to work in hearts uh, to uh, raise the support that they need, the, the financial support and the prayer support, uh, the training that they will need, Father. Uh, we, we give this to you and pray that your Holy Spirit would move to provide everything that they need. Uh, we pray for uh, brothers and sisters in Guatemala right now, uh, your church there and, and the work of Seteca. Uh, the word of uh, Inglesia Reforma. Uh, Father, uh, bless that work. Uh, bless all your people in Guatemala. Strengthen your church and uh, their witness to Jesus uh, uh, among the Guatemalan people. We trust this all to you with great hope and confidence in the strong name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. All right. Um, and just to underline a little bit. Uh, I encourage you to, to think about uh, committed pr and pray about committed monthly support for the Congress. Uh, and, and as always, uh, with, any, with any appeal that we make here at, the, here at Christ Presbyterian, that's between you and the Lord. Um, and for these gifts, uh, they, they don't go through the church. Please do not write a check to the church for Abby and Preston. Uh, these go directly to team, so get the information from them. And what they need mostly is, is that committed monthly regular support. Uh, but uh, God, may, God may prompt you to do that or not, but here's my challenge for us. We as a church can do 100% prayer support for Abby and Preston. Uh, every single one of us can make that commitment to them. And uh, I, I really, I expect us to reach that goal. Uh, let's, let's just do it, 100% prayer support. Uh, so, we are not going to receive, well, I was about to say we're not going to receive an offering this morning. We're just not doing it the normal way because we don't want to pass things that would go from hand to hand. Eric Lee has a box back there that is conveniently labeled offering. 
And uh, if you would like to make a gift today, uh, Eric is going to have that box after the service this morning. Just find Eric and, and put it in. There's a slot in the top of the box. Uh, just put it in the box. Right now, oh, one, one other thing. Next week, our plan is to be back in that building with masks and social distancing. I'm not wearing a mask so that you can understand me. Uh, I'm not just going to be mumbling at you for a while. Uh, but please wear a mask. And because of the need of social distancing, we're going to have two services. Where there's going to be the first one at 8.30 a.m. and the second one at 10.30 a.m. Please do not, li unfortunately, if you want to linger afterwards, you'll do it in the parking lot. Uh, we need to get in, get out, uh, so that we can uh, do some disinfecting between services. And by the way, if you'd like to help out with that team, I'd like to talk with you after the service. Uh, we, need a, we need a cleaning team to disinfect high-touch surfaces between services. And in order to get that done, if you come to the 830 service, it's going to be God bless you so long. Uh, please go out to the parking lot and have fellowship. We're not going to have cookies. We're not going to have coffee. Uh, there, there will come a day when we're going to be back to normal. Anyway, I'm, uh, I had a stray thought, sorry, and I'm not going to follow it. So uh, just watch your email this week for more information about that uh, and hope to see you all uh, next week inside. And right now, Bob Yearsley. Oh, no, wait, not, Bob's not yet. I'm going to pray right now. And... Uh, When I get to the end of this prayer, I'm going to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. So let's, let's bow together as I lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we're, we're so thankful for the gift of life and uh, the gift of new life in Christ. Uh, to know that we are redeemed people, that we've been redeemed by your precious love. That you sent your Son into the world to go to the cross, to carry our sin, to carry the burden of our guilt so that we could be reconciled to you, so that we could be your children, your sons and daughters, so that we could know your love, so that we could know your word. Father, you, uh, you have uh, revealed yourself to us in your word and given us hearts open to your word. So we give you thanks and praise for that. And just thank you, O oh God, for the gift of being back uh, together here again today after so many weeks being apart. Uh, this is a precious gift. And uh, just to see familiar faces and to hear familiar voices. And uh, we remember the words of the psalmist, oh, how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell together in unity. And especially, oh God, in a, in a time when there is such bitter division in our country. We pray healing for that division, but we're so thankful for the unity that, that we know in the body of Christ. That, that here, and wherever the name of Jesus is honored, that here there is unity because Christ is at the center. And every heart is submitted to him first. And Father, we pray that unity, the unity of Jesus for the whole world. And we pray for our country today that there would be a repentance and a turning toward you. Uh, oh God, unity will never come uh, when proud hearts are raised up in division and accusation one against the other. And Father, we confess that uh, we've been guilty of that too. Forgive us. And God, may we be voices and witnesses of reconciliation and hope that only comes through Jesus Christ. Father, we pray uh, for those who are sick and hurting today in any way. And we pray especially healing for uh, Rebecca for her foot and Linda for her ankle and 
for, for Charles uh, healing from uh, skin cancer, and Ira, Brenna, Arabelle, Josh, and Nora. Father, we pray your empowering Holy Spirit in our lives and in our life together. Guide our church in the weeks and months ahead as we move toward coming back together uh, in, in uh, being present with one another in worship. Uh, oh God, uh, there's, there's still challenges out in front of us, so, so guide us, protect us, we pray. And I, we offer all of these things in the strong name of Jesus and for his sake, the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be. And now, Bob Yearsley is going to read the word for us. Good morning. I think I kind of overpowered that one. Anyway, as uh, Beth said, my name is Bob Yearsley. I uh, just wish good morning to everybody here. Um, our scripture reading from the New Testament is going to be John 1, 1 through 5, and uh, plus 9 through 14. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your written word, which reveals to us your living word in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Open our minds and hearts so that your Holy Spirit may guide us in all truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. True light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord. We are uh, doing Summer in the Psalms again. Yeah, each week throughout the summer, I'll be preaching on one of the Psalms. And then uh, and, and as, part of the, as part of the worship every week, we will be singing the Psalm uh, together or a portion of it. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to, in a moment, I'm going to read a selection from the 119th Psalm. Uh, which is the longest psalm in the Bible. And uh, it is, Psalm 119 is all about the Word of God and how precious the Word of God is and how uh, powerful and transformative the Word of God is. And, and it instructs us to open our hearts, open our minds to receive the Word of God. Now, uh, Bob just read uh, from John's Gospel the good news that the Word became flesh and lived among us. Jesus, full of grace and truth. Um, Jesus, throughout his ministry, honored the Word of God and taught his disciples to honor the Word of God and, and, and to receive it, to receive the Bible as such. 
Uh, so let me, re I'm just going to read a short portion of the 119th Psalm. This is right from the middle, verses 105 to 112. And then uh, Jeff and the singing crew here is going to lead us in singing a, uh, a rendering of these words. Hear now the word of God. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to keep your righteous rules. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my free will offering of praise, O Lord, and teach me your rules. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand together. Your portion on this is a print in the bulletin, simple refrain to the words of the song. According to your word, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I give my offerings of praise, O Lord, accept them and teach me your ways. Though enemies threaten, though trials may come, I will never abandon your truth, Lord. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word are my lasting inheritance for they are the joy of my heart I give all my strength to follow your laws forever and to the very end your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Please be seated. <clears throat> Would you bow with me for prayer? Oh, before I pray, sorry. I'm going to give you a whiplash here. Um, I was just reminded uh, a couple of days ago, uh, Fran Cross took a fall and broke her wrist. 
so, uh, and, and I neglected to pray for her during our prayer time a minute ago, so let me, let me just lead us in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, uh, we do lift up Fran to you and uh, pray uh, healing for that wrist and relief from pain. Uh, Father, we just trust uh, Fran into your good care. And now, O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Uh, believe it or not, uh, when, I was, uh, when I was in seminary, I got some instruction in how to do outdoor preaching, and apparently the only thing I remember is it's supposed to, it's supposed to involve a lot of big arm motions. You know, Billy Graham. So, okay, that, now that's out of the way. Um, <clears throat> and now in all, in all seriousness, words are powerful. Uh, we often forget that. In fact, uh, you, you know, it's a common expression to say talk is cheap. And uh, talk actually is cheap. Um, it's a matter of simple economics, supply and demand. There's a lot of it. Talk. But words are powerful. Um, We see this in the Bible, and of course, especially God's words are powerful. In the beginning, God created with his word. The book of Genesis in chapter 1 tells us God said, God spoke, let there be light. And the darkness has been on the retreat ever since. And of course, we know as this side of this side of the cross and resurrection of Jesus, that the word became flesh and lived among us full of grace and truth. So words are powerful, aren't they? And because we are created in the image of God, human words, even though, even though not, not, not anywhere near as powerful as God's word, because we are created in the image and likeness of God, our words are powerful, too, for good and for ill. Uh, words can be a great blessing. Words can be uh, hurtful, uh, wounding. Uh, words can go to the heart uh, to encourage and to build up. Words can go to the heart to, to break hearts. One of my favorite writers, uh, Eugene Peterson, has said every one of us lives by a story. Every one of us live, live by words that were spoken by somebody else. And we like to imagine that, no, 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 I live, I live by my own script. I want to challenge you today you live by words that were spoken by somebody else, for good or ill. Uh, Eugene Peterson says we are all textual persons because we live by a story that was put into us through words. Those words might have come from parents or friends or teachers or some other role model. Some people live by a script that says, you're no good. Nothing that you do will ever amount to anything. Those words were spoken into you by somebody else. And perhaps it's become a dominating script in your life. A whole bunch of people live by a script that says, try harder. You know, I, I really don't have this life thing together, and uh, I know I'm kind of a train wreck, but if I just try harder, and it's never worked in the past, but never mind that, I know that next week, if I just try harder, this time, have you ever lived by that script? This time it's going to work. 
Uh, a lot of people live by a story, live by words that say, buy one more thing. If I just get that one more bright, shiny object and purchase it and bring it home and I'll have it, that's the secret of life. We do not make up our own scripts. The only real question is where the words that you're living by, where do they come from? Who spoke them? Are you living the truth of God's word or are you living a lie that somebody else spoke into your life? Now, another image that the Bible has, the Bible often says we're on a journey. We're walking a path in life. And in today's Psalm, the 119th Psalm, it implies a, a path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You need God's word to direct you. Otherwise, you'll end up trapped in what the psalm calls the snares of the wicked. Well, I want to just uh, focus in on some specifics in this psalm. I need something that weighs something here. Keys will do. There we go. <clears throat> the, first, the first portion that I want to focus in on from this psalm we learn from this text that God's words give light. God's words give light to our path, light to our feet in a dark world. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The Bible will faithfully show you the way to life at its best, the life, of a ble the life of blessing, the life that God blesses, the life of knowing God and living in God's way. Now, sometimes we want the Bible to be something other than that. Sometimes we want the Bible to be an answer book that provides answers to every question in life, but that's not what the Bible is. The Bible is not a science book. It's not anti-science, but it's not a science book. Uh, the Bi Bible is not a literature text. It's not a political manifesto. The Bible is the unfolding story about God's love for his rebellious creation and God's love for his creation and how God has entered into the world revealed himself most of all through Jesus, his son, and Jesus, yikes. We knew we were going to get a little bit of wind today. The Bible is about Jesus, to, to put it shortly and briefly. The Bible is God, the story of God's unfolding love given in Jesus Christ to his rebellious world. And it gives enough information for us to know Jesus and trust Jesus and follow Jesus. It does not answer every question we may have about life. Notice that it says, your word is a lamp to my feet. Um, I, know, I know that you've all been, let's, let's say you're out in the woods at night in the mountains and you have a flashlight. And your flashlight doesn't give you enough light to see everything that's going on in the forest all around you. You probably actually don't want to see everything that's going on in the forest all around you. But your flashlight gives you enough light to see the next step, right? And to follow, to follow the path. Um, 
that's the Bible. It doesn't illuminate everything in the world, every question that you might have. Uh, there's still darkness in this world. There's still things that we don't know and we're not going to know that God didn't intend for us to know. But the Bible gives us enough light to see the path that leads to Jesus and life in him. Uh, when I was a youngster growing up in church, and I did have the, the blessing of growing up in a Christian family and uh, growing up in a, in a faithful Christ-honoring Sunday school, it was drummed into me over and over and over again, read your Bible, right? In fact, we learned a little song. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Did you all learn that song? Oh, you, depri you had a de <laughs> deprived childhood. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you, you know what? I learned that song when I was about five years old. It's still true. It hasn't been improved on. Read it every day. Um, if you don't, if you aren't refreshed in God's word every day, other words will enter in and displace God's words. And whether those, those words come over media or uh, on social media, uh, over the radio, uh, what are you guided by? There will be, we are bombarded with words every day. Read your Bible every morning. You know, um, I was tempted to say, uh, as I was preparing this message, I thought about saying that the Bible, it needs something heavier. This will just have to do. Aha, there we go. Thank you. Um, I, I thought very seriously about saying that the Bible is like GPS. And then it occurred to me the Bible is nothing like GPS. And here's why. GPS is wonderful, by the way. I love it. And you can follow it, you know, turn by tr that pleasant. I call her Fiona. In our family, we call her Fiona. Uh, and that pleasant voice, you know, she'll just guide you turn by turn until you get to your destination and guess what if you follow GPS you will you will get to your destination and you will have no idea where you are and and if Fiona's battery dies you are toast because following turn by turn directions no the Bible's more like a map you know a map requires a little bit of work you have to study it Right? When, when, you, when you pull out a map, you have to get oriented for your direction, you have to study it, you have to look at the street names, and when you do that, you know where you're going, and you know where you're going in relation to other places in town, it, right? The Bible is much more like a map than like a GPS. It's not, the Bible's not just going to feed stuff into your ear. The Bible requires effort. It requires work. It requires study. You know, uh, every year, every, every year I have momentary despair. Right around, well, it, it comes somewhere in the middle of November. When I start to think about December preaching, and I'm doing my planning ahead for my preaching, and I look ahead, and there's Christmas just looming like a big old lit up thing on the
calendar. And you know what I think every year? I go through moments of despair. Do you know what I think every year? I think I've been preaching to these people, for some of them, for 30 years. There are only four chapters in the Bible that talk about the birth of Jesus. And I've preached on every verse. How am I going to say something engaging? I've used it all up, right? And then I start to study it and apply myself to those words. And oh, my. Light just begins to come out that I had never seen before, right? That's the way God's word is. Study it. Even the parts that you think you know really, really well study it. It takes effort. It takes work. And it's worth it. Oh, and by the way, um, one of the really sad things that has happened in today's church um, is that all too often serious Bible study has been left to the experts. Yep. The so-called experts like me. Don't leave serious Bible study to the experts. There are none. You become a student of the Word of God. Uh, you apply yourself to learning it. Uh, back in the Reformation, or prior to the Reformation in the 16th century, the Roman Church taught its people don't you, don't you try to study the Bible. Don't you try to read the Bible on your own because it's too complicated. You'll never understand it. And part of the power, the, the, part of the, 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 the spiritual power of the Reformation was putting the Bible in the hands of common people in their own language to study for themselves, to read for themselves. And guess what, dear brothers and sisters, and I, I, I all too often, the Protestant churches have lapsed back into a pre-Reformation attitude that says the Bible has to be left to the experts. And you can't understand it. Bunk. There's a word that, the, there's a word that theologians use to describe the, the Bible. They talk about the perspicuity of the Bible. You know what that means? It's understandable. Uh, th th it makes sense. That, and yeah, there's parts you're not going to understand. There's parts I don't understand. But the central message of God's word is available to anybody who's willing to put in the effort to study. And I, I really recommend that you have two resources. By the way, this sermon is going a lot longer. We're going to have to cut out point three. But... Um, yes, that, you know, that's so true. Thank you. We will have point three, Janet. You have to have three points. Okay. Um, where was I? <laughs> oh, two, two. <laughs> two resources that you should have for serious Bible, actually, no, I'm going to say three. A good study Bible, get the ESV study Bible, the NIV study Bible, the Life Application study Bible. There are lots of good ones out there. If you want a recommendation, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one. Get a good study Bible. Then get a one-volume Bible dictionary. A one-volume Bible dictionary. The, the new Bible dictionary by University Press. I, I really recommend it's one volume. It's about that thick. Any word you come to in the Bible, you, you scratch in your head or, or a name, who is this person, you can look it up in your one volume. You don't need to get one of those five-volume sets, uh, doorstopper things. Just get a one-volume Bible dictionary. And third, or uh, yeah, third, a good concordance. Most Bibles have a concordance in the back. Um, and a concordance simply means a listing of 
words. Uh, so you, you, you find a word in the Bible, you want to study it. Let's say you want to study forgiveness. You can look in the concordance and it will give you a dozen or 15 places where the word forgiveness is used. And so you can see different places in God's word that talk about forgiveness. So, God's word shines light. That was point one. Oops. Boy. <laughs> the second and I'm just going to be brief about this one the second message that I want to take out of this psalm is that God's word gives life verse 107 says I am severely afflicted give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Every one of us has been afflicted by sin that separated us from God. God's word gives life. Why? Because God's word leads, leads us to Jesus. That's the whole purpose of the Bible. The, you know, some people, will, some people will talk about the Bible. Uh, the, an, an image you might have heard, it's an owner's manual for life. That's only secondarily true. The first purpose of the Bible is to lead you to Jesus, to find life in him, forgiveness of your sin, to have that burden lifted off of you, to know why you're alive, to know that God loves you through the gift of his son, to know that Christ will indwell you by his Holy Spirit and you'll walk with him through life. That's the number one purpose of the Bible. And third, the Bible leads us to a commitment. Verse 112 out of the text that I read, the psalmist says, I incline my heart to... Im I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. You follow that? That's implying a choice. It's implying a decision. I incline my heart to perform your statutes, your laws, to obey you, in other words. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. That's implying a choice. I incline my heart. When you come to Christ in faith, God gives you a new heart and a new freedom. Jesus said, if the Son shall make you free, this is in John's Gospel, if the Son makes you free, S-O-N, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I, incli I incline my heart. I make a decision. God, I'm going to incline my heart toward you. I'm going to incline my heart toward your way. And you know what, dear brothers and sisters, that means I can know, I, that means when I get off of the path of life, which we all do and we all will, I, I can't blame my upbringing, I can't blame my parents, I can't blame you, I can't blame my family, it's just me. God, forgive me. Show me the path of life again. Now, you have the power. What that implies, I incline my heart. That means you have the power to say yes to God's way and say no to that which is not God's way. And every day we need to be able to say no. You know, I, I got a kick many years ago, and we are almost done here. We're going to get, and, and lunch is, lunch is going to be waiting for us over there. But uh, many years ago, 
and I, I know some of you are familiar with a, a, a famous columnist, uh, the Washington Post, named George F. Will. And uh, years ago, he was he and he and his wife had an infant daughter, who I'm sure is a grown adult now. But uh, uh, George Will was writing about his little daughter. The first word that she learned to speak. And uh, by the way, I'm talking about this because it's Father's Day. And I forgot to pray for dads earlier. But anyway, happy Father's Day to all the dads. (laughs) Anyway, George Will said that his his little daughter, when she was a toddler and she was first learning to speak, the very first word she learned to say, no. And he said, as a dad, he was very pleased with that. He said, that word is going to hold her in good stead in about 15, 16 years. And you know what, brothers and sisters, that, that, that's still a good word to be when, when false words come to mind that maybe that old word that says you're no good or it may be a, a word tempting us to, to leave the path of righteousness that God has put in front of us we say no We've, we are not a slave to our hormones we are not a slave to our genetics we're not a slave to the past we are not slaves to pleasing others no means you don't have to take the wrong path but God also gives us the power I incline my heart toward you to say yes to the way that God's word is put in front of us. God the Father has given you the precious gift of life. God sent his son to give that gift back to you when you squandered it. So how will you use that life? How will you make wise choices? Read God's book. Take it to heart. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you that in this dark world, you sent your son, Jesus, to be the light of the world. And you've brought us to that light and placed that light inside of us. And you've given us your written word, your Bible. Uh, I pray, oh God, give us a hunger for your word, to be students of your word every day, to read it, read, learn, mark, inwardly digest so that we will be shaped to be your people. And we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. We're going to affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Mine blew away, but hopefully I can remember it just enough to help lead, lead us in. I, would you stand? Please stand as you are able. Church, what do you believe? I believe, I believe in, in God, God the Father, Father Almighty. Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Holy words not preserved. This world where every wrong 
ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words I'm going to ask you to sit back down right now for a moment because it's going to serving is going to be a, a slightly sl slow process. So I want to explain it. Um, we do have lunch over here, and uh, what we're going to ask you to do is uh, line up beginning where you see that hand sanitizer stand. Is that Karen over there w waving her gloved hands? Yeah. Uh, and the line is going to begin right there and extend out there onto the, onto the grass. Uh, so you may just want to wait because it's not going to go real zippy fast. Uh, when you get up to uh, the servers, the servers are all washed and gloved and masked and they are going to serve you. They are going to hold your plate and pass it. That You are not going to hold your plate until you get to the end. Right? And, and they will put on your plate what you want. Uh, so you, you tell them along the way what you want. And uh, then at the end, they will hand you your plate. And then you'll come over here. Uh, there are servers who are going to pour drinks for you. There's coffee. Uh, there's tea. There's, there's, there's drinks. And... Uh, so you'll come over here, and once again, you will let them serve you. Uh, once again, this will not go zippy fast, so we may want to... So I'm, I'm just going to suggest that we start at the back and work our way forward. So all of you, you know, there was a reward this time for sitting in the back. <laughs> you were the smart one. Uh, we're going to let them go first and just go on over and go through the line, please. Try, try to observe some distancing uh, as, you, as you go through the line. Uh, but right now, I want to lead us in prayer, giving thanks for our lunch. And I'm going to pray for dads as well. Uh, but let, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, on this Father's Day, uh, we thank you for the gift of fatherhood. We, we thank you for the fathers who raised us and men who took a fathering role in our lives. And uh, Father, we pray now for all who have the responsibility of fatherhood right now. Pray that you would guide them and lead them and give them uh, a measure of your love, oh God, your, your great father heart for your children. Father, we thank you uh, for good food to share. Uh, thank you for the work that went into its preparation and, and the, the work of all of our serving team. And uh, Lord, uh, we, we ask that you would bless this food uh, to our strength in your service. Bless the fellowship around our tables. We thank you that you are present here with us. I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Go now in peace, love, and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon you now and abide with you evermore. Amen. Okay, back there in the back. 
go on and